Welcome to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, craft brews and geek news. Sit back, pour yourself a pint, and let's get into it. Now here's the founder of the Brewmasters Club and your host, Donnie Gallagher. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to another uh, great episode of the Brewmasters Club podcast. This is the uh, Craft Brews and Geek News uh, official podcast of the Brewmasters Club. I, myself, am Donnie, the founder of the Brewmasters Club. I am joined tonight by a couple of my great friends and typical guests or actual hosts here of the show. First off, Mr. Ryan Roberts, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, guys. Glad to be here with you gentlemen and drinking beer and talking about it at the same time. And Captain Lousman, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, absolutely. Uh, just, uh, yeah, beautiful weather down here. Can't complain. Fantastic. Mr. Uh, Dano, our last but not least, welcome to the show again, my friend. How are you? I'm great. Happy to be here. Happy birthday uh, to all my Marines out there, 241. Absolutely. That's a, it's a fantastic day. It's a fantastic achievement for the Marines. Uh, congratulations. Saw the pictures from the ball. Very nice. You guys look, look looking good as always. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Um, just uh, uh, the, actually November is kind of a fun month for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we, you know, close out Halloween and we do. Uh, it's a great time for craft beer. There's a lot going on. And it's a great time for we've got Veterans Day. We've got the Marines birthday. Isn't there another uh, branch that's, you know, a birthday is in this time frame? We just had our election a uh, ton of stuff going on here uh, in the month of November it's overall a good time but it's a great time for celebration so what we were going to do uh, a lot of people travel during during uh, this this time of the month of course because it is uh, this close to uh, Thanksgiving so if you're going to be out and about while visiting relatives or family or whatnot we thought we'd take this event or this episode here and kind of set the ground rules for for the Thanksgiving holidays so we've dedicated a, a huge chunk of time to uh, Thanksgiving and what beers you want to you want to cheers or you want to pair up to uh, with Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll kind of dive in that a little bit, but um, everybody, you guys, um, did everybody get a kind of special beer for this evening? Because I have something that's extremely special, and we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. I got mine. Lost wow. man, did you get anything special? <laughs> I got something that I think is special, but I think yet again I'll be uh, wildly surprised that it's available almost everywhere, and I failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm hoping I'm I'm correct in my original statement that I got something nice. Good. Well, when I when I choose beer for myself, you know, I always uh, um, it's it's always an easy decision because I, I just pick you know what I like and what I don't like or, or whatever. But um, when I get somebody else that's choosing beer for me, it always is a little bit more tricky. And because what we do here at the Brewmasters Club is try to not choose your beer, but suggest beers to try with different food, different um, different options, different pairing combinations. We thought this would be a great time to kind of suggest some things things in a whole bunch of things um, to uh, to try with with your Thanksgiving dinner. This year I thought I'm bringing something a little bigger, a little more elegant and complex. So it's it's really like um, it's a very comprehensive list and I don't know did you guys do you guys have the notes up because we can go through this and I don't have to be the only one talking here. First thing that we can start off talking about is okay so you walk into your you know in-laws or wherever it may be and it's a little awkward but you've got the the meat and cheese platter out, you've got the crackers, you've got Uncle Larry and these people that you haven't seen in a, in a few years um, that, that you're going to be talking to. Good old Uncle Larry. <laughs> Everybody's got an Uncle Larry. Yep, um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> right, we do. <laughs> um, but the most awkward part of that is is the snacks, right? So, like, how do you how do you pick a beer to to choose with your snacks? Well, first off, if you think about it, um, you're going on uh, uh, chips pretzels you're going on um like i said that that uh meat and cheese platter so there's gonna be some salty options there um the best thing to start off with when you get to thanksgiving dinner so if you can make yourself there and, and you're there and you can imagine that you're, you just walked into this house full of in-laws that is not your own um house or in-laws necessarily um grab a fest beer Fest beers are going to be your Oktoberfest, uh, your uh, uh, Fest beer. Some of them are called Surly Fest um, out of Brooklyn Center. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of cool brews that you can try that that, are, that will appease this kind of Fest beer flavor. But Fest beers pair, pair nicely because they, uh, they, they work with starters and roasty snacks, um, pumpkin seeds, salty things, because they, they have an earthy kind of um, – uh, imperial ter- carryovers or tones that actually mesh very well and set you up for the, the rest of the meal. So uh, those fests like Oktoberfests or whatnot will actually set you up to, to try and you know, ease your way into uh, the rest of your pairing uh, kind of adventure that we're going to go on this evening. Some good ones that you can try. 
Surly Fest from Surly Brewing Company out of um, Brooklyn Center, um, Minneapolis or Minnesota. Uh, October Fest out of Great Lakes Brewing Company from Cleveland, Ohio. October Fest from Harpoon Brewery out of Boston. Or Fest Beer out of Victory Brewing, which we all know comes from um, Downington, PA. So those are just a couple to try. Um, have you guys ever walked into the house full of in-laws and just been completely you know out there and and, and, uh, ostracized ready to just do something to get yourself away from the awkwardness of talking with that great uncle larry yeah i did but it was the wrong house so (laughs) well that's on you (laughs) i mean i found a nice can beer great great to throw just so i can get out of there and buy me enough time (laughs) i'm sorry dane you were were smiling dano yeah so my my in-laws actually don't drink perfect (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, so for me, it's like, well, do not want to just hammer a bunch of beers and get out of this or <laughs> deal with them or uh, or not and not, you know, upset anybody. So it, it's a slippery slope. It is. Uh, when I'm with my in-laws, for sure. R- Ryan, what, what are you working on, man, with the in-laws and Thanksgiving? Th- this year is actually going to be interesting because I'm going to bring something festive to the event, whereas in years past, might have just settled for a bottle of wine because that that seems to be the traditional thought process. So that's really been the go-to because that's all that's really there. Um, but this year, I think I'm going to actually gonna explore a little bit more and uh, bring some fest- festive beers. Well, here, here's the good news is that we're, we're trying to help everyone who's listening uh, with the same exact problem. So if, if you are a listener out there, we applaud you. Thank you very much for being here. But we're going to help you survive your Thanksgiving dinner, which is why we, we launched this out two weeks before Thanksgiving. There's strategy here, folks. Basically, We're trying to set you up for success because if you're walking around with a beer that you know a little bit about and people that you may not talk to on the the regular every every other week or so, you're going to be able to to talk some talk without having to uh, be awkwardly standing there next to to your uncles, aunts, people that you haven't spoken to in a while. So um, start off, start off with that fest beer and see what happens. You know, grab, grab a six pack or do something Um, when when the folks that you're going out to eat with and, and celebrating this Hollywood say, hey, what do I bring? Tell them, tell them to run through this list that we're about to go through today, starting with that fest beer. Um, how many of you guys have had a farmhouse ale or a Saison? Yeah, right Ryan, Ryan, so we're split again because uh, you guys know Christian Roberts being the, uh, the, the <clears throat> beer guru that he is. He kind of introduced me to Saisons, um, but there's actually uh, – he also introduced me to farmhouse ales because he loves, he loves them both. Uh, farmhouse ales, if you don't know what they are – um, they're bright, they're spicy, they're crisp. Uh, they've got kind of like a champagne-esque uh, feel and effervescence to them. Uh, they're perfect for this like fall season because they're great to be drank um, out in the you know bonfire setting or behind the table when you've got roast turkey and things like that. They pair nicely with salty foods. Um, they pair nicely with uh, salads even um, or fall uh, desserts. So it's, it's really a great... Uh, accompaniment to uh, roast chicken, turkey, things like that. It's complex, but yet it's also very easy to enjoy. So I've got a couple good farmhouse ales that you can try, uh, one of which being Hennepin from uh, Brewery uh, Omegang out of Cooperstown, New York. Um, Allagash Interlude out of Allagash Brewing in Portland. Um, We have Arthur Saison out of Hill Farmstead Brewery, Greensboro Bend, Vermont. Saison Rue out of the brewery Placentia, California. Noble Rot out of Dogfish Head, which we all know comes out of Milton, Delaware. Um, and Colette out of the Great Divide Brewery out of Denver, Colorado. So those are a couple of farmhouse or Saison ales. Um, from that description, guys, would you consider yourselves someone who would try a Saison or a farmhouse ale? They really are unique. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually did some research because I was trying to find, you know, different beers to see what we could you know, show on the show tonight. And um, I looked up the Noble Rot because I immediately saw Dogfish Head, you know, it was a name yep. brand in that in that sense. And the process that they go through to make that beer, which, by the way, I couldn't find anybody that had it. I called around. They, nobody locally had it, unfortunately. But um, uh, the, the process that they go through, they actually use a certain uh, uh, grape. Uh, it's almost like a wine process meets beer process. Like the whole description on their website was really cool. So if you get a chance to check that out, uh, please do so. The whole process was really neat. But they kind of said it's like blending a beer with a wine, but still considered beer. 
And I felt I thought that that would be a great way to introduce the holiday season, especially if, you know, everybody else is drinking wine. You can look like you might be, but you're still drinking beer and still classified as a beer. So uh, Double yeah. Rot definitely looked uh, to fall into something that I would be interested in drinking for the holidays, or at least on Thanksgiving. Miles Man, Dane, what you guys thinking? <clears throat> Yeah, um, I thought it. Uh, you you kind of had me at the champagne aspect. I thought that sounds neat, uh, just to kind of have a little bit of a little bit of the bubbly, a little bit, uh, but or at least just that that sort of <laughs> extra. I mean, that just don't shake cool. it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna shake any of my beer um, unless I'm riding my bike, which is often. So I shake a lot of my beer, but <laughs> <laughs> the idea is to attempt not to. That's why I avoid speed bumps. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a moron here, <laughs> but no, I I mean that does sound like a beer that i would try absolutely especially if it's in a weird classification like that that, that sounds like something I, I definitely need to get a little bit more involved with it's just unique man and i really think that the saisons are a little bit i think they're a little bit different from the farmhouse ales farmhouse ales they're they're served like a little bit warmer too which is kind of interesting but i think that you'd really mm-hmm. you'd really latch on to those more so than a saison but a saison also it's mm-hmm. like one of the most like uh, rudimentary like types of beer that were out there they're, they're like a very old school kind of recipe to it but um it's very cool so i definitely suggest it dane do you have any thoughts on on the farmhouse or saison yeah i think i'll piggyback off of laos and the whole champagne-esque vibe of it is yep. intriguing um pretty big champagne fan so i'm on board for it it's definitely worth trying i mean we're all ballers we all pop bottles without a doubt no I just pop one right <laughs> now <laughs> Just pop one right now. I'm in the business of uh, pouring it out. So, yep. kind of how I do. Yep. Pour some out for the homies. <laughs> yeah, pour it all out. It's fine. No, I'm not spilling any for the homies tonight. <laughs> yeah. No, I have a boat. Fine. <laughs> yeah. So moving on, you know, I, I think I told you guys last <clears throat> last few episodes went out that I'm like really moving into these Belgians, and I, and that Matilda was one of those that that really um, that I spoke very highly of. That would be a great a great pairing or a great six pack to grab for this next uh, selection too. what we're moving on to now. So we've had our starters, we've kind of um, started our meal and we're ready to go into our, you know, what's next. It's past the appetizers. Now we're saying, is it a salad? What is it um, that we're going to have before we actually get into our, our actual meal here? Um, a good go-to for this particular stage is going to be your Belgian style golden strong ales. So uh, we had one that was featured here. It's the Gun Show, uh, Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's brewed with honey and pears, and it's a light golden ale that's perfectly suited for a first course, which includes like a salad with uh, apples or dried cranberries, poppy seeds, uh, vinaigrette, something like that. Um, the sugars are in there, and they're working to kind of fuel this Belgian ale to make it really just kind of bubbly, sweet, and spicy with that Belgian yeast. So, um, Again, like we noticed when we talked about the Belgians last time, there's a banana kind of clove-ish flavor to it. Um, but it's 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 great with your your fruit salad, you know, that you kind of have at Thanksgiving, as well as your apple pie or, or things like that for dessert. So um, somebody mentioned wine. If we talk about wine and people say, oh, I want the Chardonnay to go with dinner, um, they would appreciate a beer like a Belgian golden ale uh, throughout the meal. So – Ryan, specifically, if, if you're trying to bring one six-pack that might go through the meal, it's this selection here or or the next one because the next one is our rye beer, and it's very good, very good selection for, for in terms of the whole meal as well. Some good Belgian ale selections. Horny Devil from Ale Smith Brewing out of San Diego. Brainless Belgian-style golden ale out of Epic Brewery in Denver. North Coast Grand Crew out of North Coast Brewing mm. in Fort Bragg. California. Dane, if you get over there, check it out. Damnation out of Russian River Brewing in Santa Rosa, California, or Oro de Calabresa out of Jelly Pumpkin Artisan Ales in Dexter, Michigan. Um, so just a couple hard to find, but very unique and very good tasting beers. <clears throat> Ryan, you mentioned that you're going to a, a wine party for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I would say bring it, man. Bring some, bring some Belgians, see what they say. Yeah, I might do that. Um, it, it sounds like it'll definitely keep the uh, food and party going. So I was actually thinking in my head because you were just talk- reading off that list there uh, for North Coast Grand Crew, and I couldn't help but pick up on the name Grand Crew. And Donnie, you know, uh, 
BJ's Brew House had that grand crew. I know it's not in this season, but is that the same similar thing to um, what that one is? Because I'm, I'm trying to picture it, but I can't really get a, a flavor profile on that one. What do you think? So this was from North Coast, so I guarantee it's not the same. Okay, um, I got you. I really don't know about that, so that's I'm going way out of left field, but um, that's what I would assume. Well, if I can bring that to Thanksgiving dinner, then I'm in. <laughs> that that beer is delicious. So this this whole article came from craftbeer.com, and they're they're great aggregate for news, and they push a lot of good stuff. Um, but I don't know. I, I know that these are all very hard to find. Blaus or Dane, did you guys have any any bits on that from <clears throat> Belgian ales? I'm ju- it's just a realm I'm not familiar with, unfortunately. I know you're you're gung ho about it, but uh, yeah. this is something I'm I'm kind of skirting around right now. You know, trying to trying to get into just some more weird ones. Yeah, you could always settle for the victory. That would be uh, a the victory one, the, the triple. When you mentioned that, yeah, that would be one that I would immediately go for. And actually, I think the victory triple. Actually, Golden Monkey. Golden yeah. Monkey. Okay, actually, I have had that one. You yep. know what? I forgot yep. that that was a Belgian ale. So um, I can't speak more highly of the uh, of the Golden Monkey. Yeah, it's actually uh, the first time I had one was amazing. It was at uh, Animal Kingdom. And I think I mentioned that on he- here on the podcast in a previous episode. But uh, yeah, wonderful. Uh, that was the. In, in that case, I changed everything I said originally, and I'm going to go with Belgian ales are awesome. Very good. <laughs> Dane, any closing thoughts on the Belgian ale? I'm a big Belgian fan, so any yeah, man. Belgian, uh, I'm up for it. <laughs> Definitely from the list. Um, you know, to kind of add to the list, I, I can't remember the name exactly, but the Sierra Nevada, the Belgian, the um, Olive, or the, that, yeah. And my so, Matilda. Yeah, so with the Matilda, I'm going to Charlotte this weekend. And, Very good. You know, I'm kind of at the end of a time when I'm going to be ending uh, <clears throat> drinking beer for a while. So this weekend, I'm going to go hard, and I'm going to pick up some Matilda for sure. You'll love it, dude. I'm telling you. it's it's. I, I can't say how good it is. I put it on the shelf just because I think it's it's such a fantastic beer. So. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to try it. Good. Awesome. So, so moving on. Um, I don't know. I, I again, this this is such a cool list because I don't think you guys have had probably the the closest this thing out. I don't think you guys have had mo- much of these. A rye beer. Have you guys ever had a rye beer before? It's a it's a very unique style. But it's again, it's 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 going back to the roots of of what beer came from because rye whiskey, things like that. I mean, these are the kind of um, adjunct type beers that were made. Uh, before craft beer was really a big thing. Basically, like what a rye beer is, um, they're very malty. So imagine like a red or a brown even. Um, very sweet. Hmm. They're very rich colored. Um, they're creamy. They're malt forward. Um, they've got a spicy but delightfully bitter kind of citrusy bite that makes a good first course. So again, strong cheese, salty snacks, things like that. Um, but it also pairs up nicely to a Thanksgiving plate. So you're thinking... Um, turkey gravy, uh, carved turkey, mashed potatoes or garlic, um, some sort of uh, stuffing, things like that. Um, your rise will go very, very well with that. Now, with that said, the rise also drink kind of like a rye. It's not going to be your light beer. It's not going to be your typical lager. A rye beer is going to be very earthy is what I always describe it as. But um, hmm. we've got a couple that you could choose from, at least a couple that we suggest. Uh, Bell's Smitten Golden Rye out of Bell's Brewery, Kalamazoo. Red's Rye IPA, which is different because it's only on draft, but it's from Founders in Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Rapids Michigan. Uh, Ruthless Rye out of Sierra Nevada, our private sponsor. Rye on Rye <laughs> from Boulevard Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> out of Kansas City, <laughs> and Bonehead Imperial Red Rye out of Fatheads Brewery and Saloon in North Olmsted, Ohio. Again, craftbeer.com, thank you for this very detailed list. Boys, what do you think about a rye beer for this Thanksgiving? Not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't really like malty beverages. Yeah. Um, Lost Man. I have not tried the Sierra Nevada. Um, I, I think... Uh, yeah, I probably haven't. Ha- I probably haven't had too many uh, rye beers. I've had a marble and rye. That's wonderful. That's a sandwich, though. That's right. that's a sandwich territory. But uh... <laughs> I really think that you, Louse, of all people, would get into these because they're very unique and they're um, they're drinkable 
but they're not like the scotch ale that you had where you just smelled it and were like, nope, nope, not at all. Yeah. Um, I don't want you to confuse with this. I would love to see if you ever tried a real rye beer and you did or did not like it. Ryan, what were your thoughts on these? So the whole time that we were talking about the rye beers, I kept picturing that same beer that that we were all that you were just talking about and that uh, kind of barreled scotch taste and all that like that's kind of i was like oh, i don't know if i would really want to stomach that but then going down the list there for the for the reds rye ipa i might want to start with that because i like you know the the idea that it's going to be red it's going to have the hops that i like and maybe you know finish with with more malt finish than uh, than anything but a lot of red beers do that anyway just maybe a little bit stronger so i'd be interested to see if it's something that i would want to drink just for the thanksgiving or christmas festivities versus am i going to pick it up at the store and have it on a you know every so often basis i guess so we'll see so my my and it's my general opinion is that with rye beer specifically is that you that's how I always feel. I'm like, I don't, you know, I drink that every now and again. It is just not my thing. I think that some people can get into it, which is why from Laos, the beers that you really do like, I mm-hmm. think you would be one of those folks that get into it. I just don't know, man. But um, either way, it's, it's, you know, it's just an interesting new beer to try. Huh. Um, another kind of interesting one that we have here, which would go kind of skipping over um, some of the, the other the Weizenbach. So the Weizenbach um, is a uh, is going to be a little bit more strong smelling. It's going to be very banana y because um, it's kind of like the dark kind of box that you've had before meets that that wheat beer, which again is going to spur that that kind of coriander and everything else uh, that you get out of that. Uh, but it will actually have some different kind of caramelized notes, a little bit of clove, a little bit of nice flavor that kind of warms. Um, but yet it'll also like pour well and do well with a dessert or a really rich kind of uh, dinner entree that you might have. Um, it's kind of something very interesting, but it's going to be very spicy. So you're kind of teetering on that. What really complements what balances and then what, you know, uh, contracts or, or makes the difference there for your flavor palette. Uh, honestly, it's it's going to be each case is, is different. Um, a couple different good ones to try. Weizenbach from St. Arnold Brewing out of uh, Houston, Texas. Side Project Volume 22 out of Terrapin. Weizenhammer out of Brooklyn Brewery in New York City. And Turfelbach out of Atwater Brewery in Detroit, Michigan. Um, have you guys ever had a, a Weizenbach? Because I've had quite a few of them. I honestly like them. It's just uh, in the right setting at the right time. I think that's what I had the other week, actually. <laughs> a Weizenbach? <laughs> I think so. It the name sounds very familiar, but uh, I, it, you know, all these uh, just sound like a little out of my wheelhouse. So I don't know for certain. I never they, heard the word till today. Really, you never had one. I think I had one maybe after my wedding. We were at uh, I can't remember the beer garden. I think it might have been uh, yeah, man. one of those. Yeah, a Weizenbach. It, it's. So it's one of those like like uh you know like a half vice and like I don't I don't drink those a whole lot I don't I don't love the wheat beer stuff but the Weizen box again by the fire uh, when it's cold outside in the snow on the ski hill I mean there are certain times when like that's all I want to drink is like the box and the Weizen box yeah. and the and the real rich stuff uh, the rye ales and the barley wines included it's just brilliant to have them then but. It's not all the time, so so I don't know. And, and we've skipped over a couple of them, but for time's sake, I wanted to just hit one more because I feel like it's super unusual, and I don't think that any of you guys have tried this before. <laughs> have have any of you guys tried barley wine before, um, or had a specific barley wine that you that particularly said, "Yes, this is something I should like." Negative. Everybody, sh- Negative. Everybody, yeah, everybody's shaking their head no. <laughs> so. So one, and I'll still appreciate this for two reasons. First, the uh, the first one that we we're going to cover here is called Beard Envy, and it's out of oh. out of Red Brick Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. Two of my um, favorite things. Go on. Essentially, essentially, what this article came to say was that you know no list is complete without without featuring a barley wine because they're just so very complex. So it's it's a beer, and again, you're going to hate this, Laos man, aged in a bourbon barrel. Um, that's got a real rich kind of raisiny uh, beer heavy, you know, very heavy on the malts. Um, it's meant for sipping. It's not meant for smashing. The alcohol volume is usually very high, but it's still very light in terms of it's not like motor oil. It's not real thick, 
um, but it's extremely boozy. Um, and it'll definitely appeal to, you know, your caramel, uh, your sweetness. It's got a lot of malty, uh, spirity kind of, uh, thickness to it. Um, but these are, are really just kind of desserts in their, in their own right. So, um, a couple that you would want to try besides the beard envy there, uh, the behemoth out of three Floyd's brewing, uh, they're in Munster, Munster, Indiana, uh, barley wine style ale out of green flash brewing, San Diego. Cockeyed Cooper out of Unita <laughs> Brewing in Salt Lake City. Lower Day Boom. You went out to. Of, yeah, you went to. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. 21st, Brewery, 21st Amendment Brewery in San Francisco. And Sisyphus, Sisyphus Real Ale Brewing Co. <laughs> in Blanco, Texas. Uh, really weird stuff, but would you be interested in trying it? Because, Laos, I can guarantee you, you'll get that same effect that you got from your scotch ale that you loved so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can, say, I can almost taste the sarcasm there, but uh, some name Beard Envy. I mean, that's something I'm very familiar with. So uh, I'd be game. I'd be game uh, to try something a little bit more directed, perhaps. Uh, you know, you mentioned there's a little bit more red, perhaps, in some of these. I, you know, I am, I'm a big fan of reds, clearly. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, no, that'd be something I'd be game for. So, yeah, you got to look out for them. Again, it's a, it's a really unique style, and it's, again, a very old style because they would say, hey, we had we have wine, we have whiskey, we have beer. Let's put the beer in the whiskey barrel and see what happens, you know? So it almost comes out like a scotch ale, but barley wines, it's not exactly – so barley wine is not the same as, as a beer, so it's very sweet. It's an interesting beer. If you don't like the spicy bitterness of hops, you may love a barley wine. They're usually low carbonation too, which is also very unique, but um, especially for a beer and for a good drinkable beer. But anybody else have any thoughts on the barley wines? We can kind of move on out of this one. I'll try the Sisyphus. The Sisyphus? Yeah. <laughs> That's, of course, another brilliant Dane enunciation there. <laughs> Has, hashtag Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Hashtag Sisyphus for the rest of us. Sounds ah. like a disease. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I don't want to catch any of that. <laughs> Ryan, do you have any final thoughts on those? I think for the sake of beer drinking, uh, you know, everyone should try as much as, you know, they can for different craft beers. I would probably go for the Cockeyed Cooper from Uinta uh, just because I know that they brew really good beer. And I think it would be a really good experience for the first time. Very good, man. Well, all right. And on that note, I hope you guys all have a great Thanksgiving. We're going to move on to our next uh, segment here. We spent about... 30 minutes on that uh, segment there. So we've got, we're going to try and wrap this up in 10 or 15 here, but uh, essentially, you know, we, um, we just want to say that w what we do every, every week is that we try to pronounce uh, a little bit more about your beer knowledge. And we try to expose different people to uh, different aspects of, of beer and brewing in general. And we hope that you guys are, are learning some things and enjoying things and kind of getting out of your comfort zone. Cause that's what the brewmasters club is all about. With that said, uh, we move on to our next segment here, which is called What Are You Drinking? What Are You Going to Drink? I don't even know what these things are called anymore. I have a particularly interesting one. Does anybody want to lead us off today on this uh, great adventure of the beers that we brought to the table for this particular podcast? That motorcycle <laughs> did quite well. That was a motorcycle. That was a motorcycle in my house. Um, he so you drove go first. <laughs> well, yep, the motorcycle has it. So, uh, so that means uh, you. Oof. Well, see, now I had a bit of a uh, supply and demand issue. Snafu? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a snafu. Snafu is a great word and game to use in this scenario. So uh, I didn't have a single beer from this list, uh, which is unfortunate. I tried to do so, but didn't work out. What I ended up getting was a seasonal beer that, I, again, I've already mentioned this, but I, I hope it is a little bit more rare than I think it is. But I ended up going with the Magic Hat Vamplifier. Mm. I'm not hearing a lot of noises, so that sounds like it's kind <laughs> of unknown. I've been uh, wanting to try that. Go, no, that's that? good, man. I've not. I don't think I've had that. Good job, it, Loss. It's a seasonal beer. Sold me already. It mentions Hoppy Red. Uh, that also, of course, I mean red. Come on. Uh, and then. And then the fact that it was from Magic Head. I thought that was neat. A neat little twist. So very excited about it. Uh, apparently, it's... Uh, I'll give you... To wrap it up in a nutshell here, uh, it's, it's about the changing of the seasons. So it's a red that is awkwardly hoppy. I mean, 
I say awkwardly in a good and bad sense because it, it does reach out and get you. Um, someone just opened a beer. Uh, <laughs> it does reach out and get you. Um, absolutely. But it's, you know, for somebody who likes craft beer, it actually is a, a pretty good amount of hops to, to kind of enjoy. So I like it. it it's cool because it bridges the gap between like, hey, it's warm out and all of a sudden it's cold out these days. So, yeah, for me, it actually is pretty cool. They have some sort of um, sound. Uh, they, they mention an, an anthem and a song or something like that. I think that's on their website. I don't know. Um, the the logo got me immediately, but it's some sort of weird talking uh, vampire esque um, speaker. So interpret that how you want, but uh, but I interpret it as a uh, pretty pretty exactly like they said, hoppy red ale, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. Excellent. So Ryan, I think was it you that just opened the beer? Because I want to save. Um... Probably Dane is his last beer on the podcast. Well, uh, for the foreseeable future, we'll make him go last. Ryan, did you just open one? Was that chocolate no, chip? So I, I told you, I like actually empanada. got a uh, chocolate peanut butter porter from. It's called Sweet Baby Jesus, and um, it was on one of the lists there for the porters. And a couple weeks back, when we were talking about you know candy and pairing beer with candy and stuff like that, I was able to find one Reese's piece of peanut butter cup in the bag of candy left over from Halloween. So I was going to go ahead and pair some beer with some candy and see if it kind of brings out the flavor profiles a little bit. So if you guys have time for me to do that, I will go ahead. And what he's really referring to is that we had a, like I said, a comprehensive list. So uh, in terms of porters and what we suggest that you could pair a porter up with um, going back to our Thanksgiving here, you're, you're thinking about easy drinking, accessible porters that are that are not overwhelmed by sweetness. Um, we're trying to do that with chocolate things, uh, cake and, and candied oranges, pecan pie, apricots, and a raisin. I don't even know what the hell that is. But sweet treats. With your sweet treat, Ryan, how'd that work? I got to tell you, my initial reaction for the beer was fantastic. You crack the bottle open. You can smell the peanut butter. You can smell the aromas of the chocolate and everything coming together. If you hold it up to a light, I, I've got LED lights hanging up on the track lighting here, and you can't even see through the beer. It's completely pl- pitch black. It's just it's fan- it's fantastic looking. But and you know we had that terrapin that I had a couple weeks back with the same kind of flavor profile, and it, it was missing a little bit of that chocolate. It had the peanut butter, it had the smell of the peanut butter, but it was missing a lot of that chocolate that I was expecting out of this beer. Uh, but adding it with the Reese's Pieces really enhances the experience because it didn't finish dry when I had the chocolate. Like without the chocolate, it finishes dry. With the chocolate, with the peanut butter and everything else, it doesn't finish dry. It finished very well balanced. And so if you guys are out there and you're, you know, picking up little snacks here and there, or maybe if you see some chocolate and you're drinking this peanut butter porter, you know, it's definitely going to bring it around and and be a really good experience blending those two things together. So overall, I'd give it a uh, four if you're just drinking it without food, four and a half with. Four and a half out of so. ten commandments for the sweet baby Jesus chocolate <laughs> peanut butter porter. <laughs> I'm singing out of five, four. but if you want to go ten, four. I give it a nine. Yeah, from, from Duke Claw <laughs> Brewing Company out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, very interesting, man. No, I wanted to hear – Oh, community here. Well, yeah, I wanted to hear how that was. Um so I went to a ah, crap, and I even have my little card. I went to a beer tasting uh, that was uh, it was kind of it was not a VIP event or anything, but they they had uh, four or five different brewers that were at the local liquor store, and they were just kind of doing like a on the spot tasting. And I went down the line and, and tasted all the local beers, and there was one that that grabbed me very uniquely, and, and I thought this is something really special. And it was the Cigar City Brewing's Lou Gim Gong. Have you guys had that? It's extremely <laughs> unique, and they only have it on draft. So I'm guessing Dane, you haven't, but Ryan Laos, have you guys seen the Lou Gim Gong? Uh, I think nope. I've heard that name on CNN, but no. <laughs> 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 well he is from korea the okay. guy with the nukes right the, the, yeah. the guy with the nukes no <laughs> so so I'll, I'll explain the beer a little bit but let me back up because you know how cigar city loves to kind of engage in the uh, local history and things like that so the description for this beer reads as as follows it's uh florida's reputation as a hub for the citrus industry owes much to lu gim gong a chinese immigrant i said korean i'm wrong chinese immigrant who uh 
resided in De- Deland, Florida, and who advanced made major advancements in cross pollination techniques that changed the way Florida grew citrus. Think about that. Um, to honor that Floridian pioneer, 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 Pi- pioneer. He did pollinate. I get that. Pioneer. Uh, we cross pollinated our invasion pale ale with orange peel citrus and white oak to accentuate the beer's citrus character and subtle notes of vanilla and coconut. They say here's to the citrus wizard who is Lou Gim Gong. So, with that said, we've all had the uh, the uh, invasion ale that Cigar City makes, and we've all well, some of us have had the. Cigar City Highlight that's aged on the white oak. I know Ryan, you've had it. I've had it. I think Laos, you've had it too. Correct. Dane, Dane maybe not because you're because you're not exactly here right now. Um, <laughs> but this beer is the Invasion Pale Ale, aged on the white oak, and then with the orange peels from the local citrus uh, growers thrown mm-hmm. into the mix. So it's it's again it's a nice Cigar City tribute to history as to what actually happened and where it came from um this gentleman migrated here in the 1880s so it's it's you know a well over uh 100 year history you know thank you to this this lu gim uh gong guy but it was unique because it, it tasted like the invasion but that citrus at the end just really it was like sour but it worked and it, it didn't taste as strong as like an IPA with that citrus, but it had its own kind of kick to it. It mm. they don't bottle it, they don't can it. Um, it's just a very unique beer. So I literally got it on Saturday, and I saved the growler until I could share it with you guys. So, um, what do you think about a beer description like that? It's pretty unique. Crushed uh, it. <laughs> go for questions. No questions at all. I see. No, I have questions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Ask. I only actually have <laughs> statements. Um, I thought Dane was buzzing in first. No, so uh, I need to have that in my life, like immediately, because that sounds amazing. I loved Invasion, as we mm. all know on the podcast. I love citrus anything because it reminds me of where I live. Uh, in case I get lost, but lastly, it it's made by Cigar City. I mean, th- th- that's the trifecta right there. That sounds wonderful. I need to have some. But you say it doesn't come in bottles or go anywhere else. So how do I get it? Well, I have to grab some from the tap room before they stop selling it and then save it for you. But I'm telling you, man, it's um, it's orange, tangerine, a uh, l- little bit of vanilla, a slight coconut. Um, and it's all mm. kind of on those white oak, you know, spirals. So it's got some bitterness, some caramel notes to it. Um, it's got that really citrusy character, but then it has that tannic wood quality. So it's it's really just, it's a fantastic beer. I was blown away. Like I was literally blown away. <laughs> I want that. I want it's that like Kool Aid. It's really good. <laughs> it's got a five percent alcohol, you know, to it. But um, man, it's just it's really good. It's very good beer. I want that. It looks and sounds delicious, to be honest yeah. with you. So yeah. Oh. So that was that was truly something special in the last week that I that I ran into. So I, I had to share that with you guys. But Mr. Dano, uh, what are you working on uh, on your uh, way outro here, bro? Yeah. So I'm in the transition to where I'm going to be cutting out uh, beer for a little while, at least. Um. So the last beer I had was one that I had last episode, which was Guinness Draft. Uh, I've already finished it. I had one earlier as well. So crush those. Uh, this weekend I will be drinking. I'm going to be getting Matilda uh, per, per Donnie. And then also in Charlotte, Highland Brewing Company um, just released their winter warmer. It's called, Cold, it's called Cold Mountain. It's a winter ale. It came out today. And this stuff mm. flies off the shelf. So my dad's going to pick up some. And it's a winter warmer. Uh, when you smell it, it kind of smells like Christmas. It's delicious. It's got a little bit of a vanilla taste to it. So that's what I'll be drinking this weekend. And i um, really excited about it. And that'll be it for a while. So, Well, we applaud you, uh, sir, and, and your uh, 
your search for, you know, a higher power there and then to get off the beer wagon for a bit. <laughs> Not a higher power. I'm sorry. That's the wrong thing to say. It's, but... it's all about the carbs. Yeah. So I got the carbs. <laughs> higher, higher good, I guess, than the rest of us here just sitting around <laughs> drinking beer. Um, but that's good, man. But um, all right, guys. Well, anybody had any final thoughts here? We're, we're going to kind of cut this one short just because of uh, time's sake and whatnot. Uh, we won't even get into any of our kind of geeky, techie stuff. This is literally all about beer. We wanted to focus on our Thanksgiving dinner and set you guys all off in the right direction, knowing that that three, four, five days from now, everyone that's listening here will be jetting off to different parts of the country to meet in-laws, to, to, to meet with family, to uh, embrace loved ones. And we just don't want you showing up awkwardly and not having anything to talk about. So we hope that you have a ton of material, a great jumping off point for future conversations with your awkward family members. And we, uh, we do hope that you appreciate that. Um, anybody have any final thoughts on anything we talked about this evening? Yeah, double check those addresses. Make sure you're going to the right houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't pull out, man. Nah, well, they were nice, but they, well, hashtag, they weren't too appreciative. Hashtag Louse Unwanted. <laughs> All right. If you guys want to jump into barley wine, the Bigfoot from Sierra Nevada is probably something you could start with. Looks you know like how we that. love Sierra Nevada. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I especially like their bumper stickers that they could possibly send. That's, those are my favorites. You guys are shoot, shooting, we're talking. You're shooting way too low, man. You want to get them as a sponsor? They got deep pockets, bro. We hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So why tune in next week? Um, we are going to, uh, of course, we're we're still looking to to Thanksgiving. Um, we will see the political fallout of, of Donald uh, Trump being elected president here. Uh, we may have some different stories about the economic future for beer and different things like that. I will not let Ryan Roberts open his mouth to talk about a bit of politics because it's not a politics show. Um, just tune in. We're going we're gonna to put out some stories. Maybe we'll get um, uh, Mr. Dane and Mr. Kelly to, uh, to give us a little bit of insight when they go through their beer flight there. Um, next week and talk a little um, turkey talk a little turkey gobble, uh, gobble. i will do that we will be recording a lot more audio over the next week and a half um, to try and entertain and put some good content out for you guys we do appreciate everyone who listens to us please continue to follow us on soundcloud itunes android check these video versions out on youtube they're just fun to have in the background because there's a little bit of extra content that is not exactly as filtered as our podcast for audio um, you can always support the show by clicking the Amazon link below this uh, video or right below uh, in the description. It doesn't cost you anything at all. The Wizards of Amazon just throws a couple of bucks per everything you buy. You're going to buy stuff anyways. Just do it through that link. It helps us out just a teeny little bit. Um, where can everybody find us? Laos Man, go ahead and start us off. Where can uh, they find you? That's going to go ahead and be uh, at Mr. Lausman on Twitter. Uh, we can always find me there with my illustrious hat and uh, hats of different natures and things of that nature. The hat's the illustrious part. That's well, the illustrious part? No, well, the beard's there, too. So, I mean, let's... I mean, your beard's like four inches long. It's, uh, I just was duped into some sort of bet with some of my coworkers, so it's about to get longer, so everyone's got to deal with that. <laughs> well, looking good there, man. Never forget Maelstrom. Uh, Mr. Ryan, <laughs> man, where can they find you? Yeah, everyone, you guys can find me on uh, Twitter at BroodBoy813, and I hope everyone goes out there and experiences Thanksgiving, not just for their uh, stomachs, but for their taste buds as well. So enjoy it, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. I'm telling you, beer helps. It makes everything a lot less awkward. <laughs> Mr. Dane, where can they find you? You can find me at DT Mert on the Twitterverse. Fantastic. And as always, you can find me um, at Brewmasters Club on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you want to talk to the show, we encourage that you do so. We are community driven. Please use the hashtag Brewmasters Club Cast. We look forward to talking to you guys soon. Have a great week. We will talk to you next week. If we don't, happy Thanksgiving. Um, and we love you guys all. Have a great night. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews and Geek News. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. 
Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers!